My name is Jake Epstein. I'm playing the role of Adam in The Wedding Contract, and this is Young Entertainment Mac. The first time I realized I wanted to be an actor was when I used to go on these road trips with my family when I was a kid, my my parents would drive my sister and I 10 and a half hours from Toronto to New York City to see a Broadway show. That was our family vacation. And the first year that we went, we saw the musical Big, which is actually based on a Tom Hanks movie from like the late 80s and in the show the like chorus are all kids like all kids around my age and i remember being like around nine and seeing these kids being funny and so talented and getting applause and it just hit me like a brick and i knew that i wanted to be one of those kids i do remember the audition <laughs> process for degrassi um it was a, I mean, it was a series of auditions. I want to say it was like three or four auditions. The first one was a monologue, like as Craig, and I got a call back. Mm -hmm. And then as I got deeper and deeper into it, we would do uh, auditions with other characters who were already on the show. So it was like a screen test. The final audition was, with, was literally like a screen test. It was doing scenes with a bunch of the characters. And to be honest, the same thing would happen today. The difference is a lot of it's over Zoom, which is so strange, um, especially when you're trying to have like a chemistry read with someone <laughs> we met, like you're just online, it's so different. So I feel like that, that's the, the real difference today is if I was auditioning for Degrassi today, it would be all, all online. Where do I think Craig Manning would be today? Um, it's a great question. The last time we saw Craig, I'm just trying to think, he uh, he went off to Vancouver to be a musician and then we see him in Los Angeles for, for a gig. And uh, I think my feeling would be he'd slowly move from being like a rock star to maybe a producer, like a behind the scenes thing. He would maybe try to mentor younger artists and then I don't know, maybe part of me thinks that one day he'd move back to Toronto and get a job at Degrassi as a as a music teacher and uh, and and like help out sort of a, a new generation of kids having some trouble and kind of using music as, as a way to, to connect with some kids. The experience of filming the Footloose sequence in the Umbrella Academy was, uh, it was, it was, slushy it was wet it was sweaty uh it was like being in like a uh, like a human slip and slide um it, uh. it was it was kind of gross uh -huh. like what i was feeling inside my prosthetics and costume the actual experience of doing the dance was so fun uh it was kind of our icebreaker when we all met, it was kind of at the height of COVID when we were filming that that sequence, and um, the way that we the way that we met the other cast members was um, was over Zoom. And and John Hagenbottom, who's this incredible choreographer, came, met us all, taught us the choreography, this ridiculous country line dancing. No one looks cool doing country line dancing, so we all felt like total idiots. <laughs> and it was a great way to bond. And then uh, I want to say like three weeks later, we were on set filming this ridiculous thing. I mean, it felt like a weird fever dream. I kind of couldn't believe like this was what we were doing, <laughs> what I was doing with my life. And I definitely had the hardest time because uh, I was the, the costume was so hot and there yeah. was no kind of air. There was no way. And I was just like, soaking in my own just totally claustrophobic it looks great like it, it kind of it looks awesome but uh yeah i remember everyone was like this is the greatest day ever and i'm kind of like <laughs> you're like sitting down after every take here we go i kind of saw i felt like i was i was suffering for my art
in the best possible way? It's a great question. If social media had existed when Degrassi was out, how would it have been different? I mean, I don't know. I think it, it probably would have been around the same. Like, I, you know, we would have all been posting and navigating. We would have been doing like live tweet parties, I'm sure. Um, I feel like a lot of the storylines of the Degrassi would have been way more social media heavy, how that was affecting us. Um, but in terms of kind of the experience, I, I feel like it would have been roughly the same, um, just uh, with a lot more focus on, on phones and, and online storylines. So the wedding contract is uh it's a it's a hallmark uh romance story but instead of the movie being about the courtship and love story of two characters the quest the movie kind of examines what happens next two characters have fallen in love and they want to get married and what's what's the reality of that and it shows their families meeting and the sort of loving um, uh, complicated reality of, of families being thrust together. It shows both of them um, having opportunities with their jobs and how that affects the other person. And it kind of deals with all these realities of planning, in their case, a Jewish wedding in a really fun and uh, realistic way. And I play Adam, who is, um, he's a, uh, Adam is, a, is a, like, I think kind of a real softy. Like you see, he loves, he loves romance movies. Um, I think he totally wears his heart on his sleeve. He's very good at his job. He gets this, this big promotion to be this ad executive. And, and he's completely in love with, with Rebecca. And um, I think that's, that's kind of his journeys. He has these two different pulls. He, he loves Rebecca so much. He wants to do everything for her. And he's also this kind of ad executive star and trying to navigate how to fulfill his own dreams at the same time. Okay, honestly, side note, it's so funny because I'm literally living this movie right now. I'm getting married in September, so I was watching it and I'm like, oh my gosh, like wow. I'm going Congratulations. through all the- Thank That's you. That's so exciting. But yeah, I, it was just so funny. Like the parallels of the moms and like all, I was just like. You're dealing uh, with it, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My favorite part about Adam is I think the fact that there are so many different sides to him in some scenes. Um, he's really funny and really witty and quick. In other scenes, he has these kind of uh, like minor panic attack meltdowns. Um, like I feel like he really, he's, he's quite an, he's, he has a side to him that's quite anxious, really cares about his work. Um, he's also a great salesman, great at his job. He's also like this, this kind of soulful, um, really like deep person and lover. And so I felt like every scene I got to play with him was this totally different side to the guy, which, um, which I really loved. And the most challenging part about playing the part to be honest, was the fact that my wife was pregnant while I was away filming this in Vancouver. Um, and that was, you know, I was really blessed to, to get the chance to do this movie, but it was really hard being away filming this this particular one. I can't imagine being your wife and having you be gone during that part. Oh, yeah. The pregnancy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just like loving resentment all the time. Uh, no, she was amazing. Like she... She completely awesome. got it, and I'm really lucky right right now that we we have this newborn, and I'm able to be around right now, which is really the thing that's that's yeah. um, really really matters. Firstly, I, I I didn't see the Tony Awards this year, but I um, because I have this this newborn and don't have time for anything <laughs> right now. But I did um, I have seen the show Parade before, and I'm. I'm a huge fan of Jason Robert Brown. I know the show, and I think it's um, a really amazing show. I'm really glad that it, that it won the Tony Award for Best Revival. Um, in terms of uh, the second part of your question uh, about why I want to be part of telling Jewish stories, I mean, why that's important to me. I feel like when I started out 
uh, of being an actor, I really wanted to play parts that were like other than myself. Um, I wanted to be as far from myself physically and socially and, and, and um, sense of humor and all of it. And the older that I've gotten, the longer I've been lucky enough to do this, the more that I've wanted to play parts that are closer and closer to who I am, to be parts of, um, to be part of telling stories that are that are um, a part of me that I can really relate to. And and one of the aspects is that is that I grew up Jewish, um, not not religious, but but culturally Jewish. And and uh, my two grandparents on my mom's side were both uh, survivors of the Holocaust and. My mom is an, is an author of, she tells, um, uh, she writes uh, young adult novels all about the war, the Second World War and the That's Holocaust. That's so cool. It is, it's amazing. So that, that history is really uh, important to me. I wouldn't be here without the unimaginable bravery of my grandparents. And so that culture and, and that, that religion is, is important to me. And so when I hear about stories, Jewish stories, um, yeah, I often really want to be a part of it. It's, it feels really special to get to be the one to tell those kinds of stories. And in this case, you know, when I heard about this movie that was about a Jewish wedding and sort of tries to portray that uh, accurately and realistically, um, I thought I should be the one that's yeah. telling that story. And I, I really believe that like the more um, specific you are about a story, the more universal it is. So I, I really feel like this specific Jewish story, I feel like a lot of people of all cultures, all religions, all creeds can, can relate to it. Uh, what is it about these Hallmark films that I think people love so much? Uh, I, how do I say this in a way that's like, <laughs> it's like loving and gentle, like Hallmark, my understanding is these stories are um, like lovingly predictable. They're like, you know, um, we know how they're going to end. <laughs> and that's what makes them so great. I feel like the world is, is stressful and and it's a lot. And I feel like to be able to offer something that's filled with joy and love and humor and family and positivity um, is a real like necessary escape for people. And I feel like that's at the heart of why people love these stories so much. Uh, the process of filming a Hallmark movie is, is it's like any, it's like filming any uh, project, any movie, any TV show. Um, you know, there, there's not, there's like, there's, there's no uh, change to it. A lot of the Hallmark movies shoot in Vancouver, which is really lovely and beautiful to get to, um, to get to go and visit that part of, uh, that part of the West Coast. Um, but in, in terms of, like the process of actually showing up to work and and the professionalism and the vibe on set i'd say it's 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 pretty similar to to most things that i've worked on that's a great question i mean i feel like every project i do every movie i do uh there's stuff that you learn about yourself as an actor there's stuff that that pushes you in a way you didn't really imagine um, one of the lovely things about these kinds of movies is that I feel like your own character only exists because of the relationship of the other actors. So in my case, I didn't really know who my character Adam was going to be until I met Becca Tobin, who plays Rebecca. And once we started hanging out, once we started doing some of the scenes, I could sort of figure out what our vibe was, what our chemistry was. And um, that kind of like yin and yang, like the kind of space that our, each of our characters take up, the kind of humor that each of us have, the you know, the, that back and forth banter that I think is so important in these movies, that chemistry is so important. 
Damn. And so I always feel like that's the thing that I'm, I'm constantly learning on these movies is how to like bounce off of new actors I've never met before. And in this case, the, I think the actors are fantastic on this movie. I mean, Becca was amazing. Um, Laura Coltis, who played uh, my mom in the movie, was phenomenal. Colleen Wheeler, who played Rebecca's mom. Um, all the other actors. In this, I mean, everyone I just thought brought something really unique, fun to the table. And and uh, that was always the challenge. was like, okay, how am I going to kind of fit with that? Um, how, how is my character gonna fit in this situation with this this new person I've never worked with before? I feel like I am always subconsciously getting inspiration from the stuff I'm watching, the stuff I'm reading, the stuff I'm, the music I'm listening to, without even meaning to. Um, but I mean, in the case of these Hallmark movies, I grew up watching the 90s rom-coms, the like late 80s, 90s movies, um, Dirty Dancing, and like all the early Tom Hanks movies, Big, Splash, Sleepless in Seattle. And I feel like um, Tom Hanks in particular, because he's really like this kind of uh, everyman, he's, he's um, kind of effortlessly funny, and loving and kind of wears his heart in his sleeve and is kind of flawed in a way that's really endearing. Um, I feel like, you know, actors like Tom Hanks, actors like uh, James Stewart from It's a Wonderful Life, I feel like I've really um, been attracted to, to those kinds of actors because um, as opposed to being like this kind of chiseled, flawless, um, you know, leading man, I feel like they, they were always portraying these very realistic, very flawed, very human characters. And so I feel like that's um, always been my inspiration for these kinds of movies and the kind of, the kind of vibe and, and kind of energy that I, I love to, to bring to these movies. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite, this is a very important question. What my <laughs> favorite snack at Crafty? Um, would have to be so there's a lot of good ones but every now and then uh the producers will have a, a grilled cheese truck oh and it's like you know like a few like maybe once yeah. a week they'll kind of try to boost the, the morale of everyone and i'm very i'm i'm uh um the love of my life the true love of my life might be grilled cheese <laughs> and um, on this, what was funny is when we were filming this movie, um, we were shooting it during uh, Passover, which is a mm -hmm. which is a, a Jewish holiday. And uh, again, like I'm I'm not religious, but in in the the holiday, in the, in, you're you're not supposed to eat bread. Essentially, mm -hmm. I found it very like kind of weird and cruel. Like the producers had like this grilled cheese truck with like <laughs> delicious bread wafting through the set during Passover. And of course I had to have some, and I, I posted it to my Instagram and made the mistake of doing that. Cause I got a very, a stern uh, phone call from my, from my real mother uh, that evening. Oh. Like <laughs> it's Passover. What are you doing? Yeah. Okay. But look, look, worth it. Grilled cheese all the way. <laughs> what is my like my get my get ready routine for one of these days? I mean, the the truth is the the filming on these movies starts so early, like mm -hmm. the call time. Your call time is normally like five in the morning, so there's not a lot of time to get ready. You kind of like throw for me throw <laughs> yourself in a shower, kind of like throw some caffeine at your face. Um, I was I was really lucky because I had um, a really lovely transport driver who who took me mm -hmm. from where I was staying to work every day. Her name was Charlene. She was a big uh, country music fan. She had a farm. Oh, love that. And she would tell me <laughs> she would tell me a, like a lot about what was happening with her animals and about all the the amazing concerts she'd been to. Excuse me over the years. So I kind of felt like on this particular movie. It was a combo of like a shower, caffeine, and then talking to Charlene, who kind of just like calmed me down, kind of woke me mm -hmm. up, and then I was kind of ready to, to be on set and, and film. Okay. Love Charlene. Um, we love Charlene. 
If me, Craig, Adam, or Alfonso were in a zombie apocalypse, who would have the most, I mean, me, the least chance of surviving, for sure. I'd be dead. I'd be toast. Um, I think it's, oh, it's gotta be Alfonso, for sure, from the Umbrella Academy. He's a superhero and he's the pain mirror. I feel like any, uh, any attack from a zombie, he would deflect back. And he also, like, to be honest, he kind of looks like a zombie. So I sort I feel like uh, he'd get mistaken for another zombie. People would leave him alone. And that's how he would survive the zombie apocalypse. All right, this is Jake Epstein signing off. Uh, thank you so much, Young Entertainment Mag, for having me. And uh, please don't forget to subscribe to Young Entertainment Mag. Thank you.